What up, everybody? Uh, welcome to the On Blast show. Um, we're here with uh, George again. Say hello, George. What's up, guys? Um, once again, uh, this show is about putting people on blast. I don't care who, what, when, where they are. Uh, you got something negative or positive to say about them, you bring them here, and we'll make sure that uh, they know that they're getting put on blast. Uh, Want to give a big shout out to uh, my uh, Dominicano brother uh, Gross for uh, bringing PL down after only one tournament um, after Evo, and my little cat in the background there that you're all hearing. Um, pretty much, uh, I'm going to start the show off today with uh, something different. Rather than put everybody on blast, um, I want to also shine a light down on some people that are in the community that deserve to have a light shined on them. Um, I have one of the few female players that are out there. Um, one player that pretty much she can say something that not many of us out here can say, which is she, uh, she defeated uh, Justin Long in the tournament, knocked him out. Um, we also want to give shout outs to, uh, to CD Jr. Uh, and Rio, they're going to be on the show today. And also Gerchap, the owner and main brain behind MKU, is going to be with us a little bit later. Um, George, you have anything else you want to add? Um, just quick rundown, everybody. Um. Yeah, we're going to have Gertrude, Rio, C.E. Jr. All going to be talking about everything. Um, quick point also, if you guys look at the info section over there, if you've got questions and stuff like that, let us know. Uh, hit us up on Twitter at the On The Blast Show. On Twitter, uh, send us your question, whatever the hell kind of question it is. Besides Mexicans, because I saw that last week that someone posted about it. But an uh, interesting question for the guests or one of us on here. Also, you know, we are looking for other people. If you got people to put on blast. Contact us, me or James. Uh, you can hit us up on uh, Touch Your My MKU, Twitter, wherever you want to hit us up at. Let us know what's going on. Also, we, you know, we're looking for other female players out there in the fighting game scene. You know, if we want to, you know, put people on blast or talk about the trolling or just to get their viewpoint out there and get their name out there. So, um, if any of you guys or I mean, any of the girls out there interested, let us know. Um, other than that, we'll take it over back to James right now. Go ahead, James. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce you guys all to uh, Goldfish Keeper. She was the uh, better half of uh, Mr. Tom Brady. Um, she's also one of the few people that can actually say she did successfully beat Justin Long. Uh, Goldfish Keeper, you want to say hello? Hey. You, you a little nervous? Um, a little nervous. <laughs> No need to be nervous. Everybody here, they don't bite. <laughs> so, uh, I want to start by asking you, how did you get into the uh, MK scene? You. <laughs> um, I remember I would visit Test You Might and just hear people always talking about the tournaments. And it just sounded like a lot of fun. I've always really liked to travel and... Um, uh, Winter Brawl was really close to my best friend. I wanted to see her anyway. And I remember mentioning I wanted to go, but I was like really scared because I knew I was going to be like the only girl there. <laughs> and you sent me a PM and said, don't worry about it. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, a girl in the fighting game scene is definitely uh, different from the norm. I know a lot of players like... Uh, Q is a, is a player that's out there. She's a Street Fighter player. You got Sherry Jennings. There's not much as far as girl players in the scene today as far as the MK goes. I mean, this the mysterious Miss Spin, who, to be quite honest, I asked her to be on the show, but apparently she's seeming more and more to be a fictitious character. Mm -hmm. Um where I believe it's just people that are trolling, uh, that are pretty much just trolling, uh, saying they're a girl, which you'll notice, you know, in this scene, you do get that a lot. <laughs> um, as far as you uh, playing in tournament-wise, you uh, 
I know you've been to a lot of tournaments. I have. <laughs> uh, um, what? Uh, gonna... how, how have you done? You know, as far as competitively in the tournament scene. Um, I have never done well competitively, but um, I've always really loved going out and running casuals and meeting the community and just being part of it, I think. Well, I mean, right now, uh, I know Def has uh, his girlfriend uh, that plays competitively. Um, beyond you two, I remember seeing one other woman that was out actually playing competitively um, and I think it was at NEC she was a cabal user but I mean I could pretty much say that I believe you guys are the only three players as far as women how does you know sites like test your might um, and other guy players treat you as far as uh, as as far as being a competitive person within the scene um you know there are are a lot of guys, I think, um, I think my favorite thing I, um, yes, I know, Kitty, um, <laughs> I could, I'm sorry, could you ask uh, again? <laughs> Basically, what I want to know is, as far as, you know, how are you perceived amongst other guys being one of the few women that are actually in the scene? Oh, uh, um, it goes either way. I've gotten some pretty harsh stuff um i think my favorite is uh when i did beat justin wong at uf gt people are saying he let me win just because i'm a girl <laughs> um now how bad was that beating did you really beat him pretty bad or, or was it a little close it was a little close a little close um i think a lot of it was he just didn't know how to get in on jade <laughs> He got kind of surprised with the matchup. He probably didn't know the Jade matchup. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's a really sweet guy. It was, it was an honor just to get to play him. Okay. I never, uh, I never expected to win. <laughs> now, what did you go in the tournament? What was your ranking? Like, did you go like two for two, one for two, three for um, two? Just him. <laughs> just him. So you went one for two. Just yeah, just Tim. <laughs> well, hey, you beat a legend. I mean, it doesn't matter what game you beat him, man. You still beat a legend. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, people could say he let you win, but you know what? A forfeit is a win <laughs> in anybody's book. Whether he let you win, whether you beat him, nobody can take away that you've actually beaten one of the true legends um, of, of fighting games in general. An overall persona of him is, you know, he's a... Uh, a, a jack of all trades, but a master of street fighter. Um, all right, hold on. I'm getting a request right now <laughs> to make this bigger. Do you have cantaloupe? Um, I do have cantaloupes. Uh, right now, uh, right now, I'm kind of. Uh, I just had. A couple of New York slices of pizza. So, unlike you know, uh, sixteen bit and all those other guys who've called out Pizza Hut is pizza. It ain't pizza. It's just slop. Um, <laughs> so you know, once the once the pizza settles in, I'll probably quick kick out a little uh, cantaloupe. Um, so now, you know, now you've been competing for how long? About um, only about four or five months. Now, within that four or five months, do you find uh, the guys in the Mortal Kombat scene, uh, what's the word I want to look for? How about just pain in the asses? <laughs> Definitely at first. There's there's a hazing process for, for girls, I think. I, I'm sure there is for everybody, but it, it felt like mine took way longer. <laughs> Um, now you, uh, you obviously are, uh, partnered up with, uh, the MK community's king, uh, Mr. Tom Brady. Um, now what's it like, uh, dealing with Tom on a daily? 
He seems like he's pretty. I think he's pretty mellow on the uh, when the when the MK uh, lights and cameras are off of him. He looks like he's a pretty mellow cat. Yeah, he's pretty laid back. And speaking of cats, I hear a cat in the background. Yes. Um, <laughs> the cat seems like it has a lot to say. Um, what's the name of this cat? This is Glenn. This is Glenn, and I'm assuming that the picture you have is the picture of Glenn? Yes. Well, Glenn, you got a big fucking mouth. Oh, word. <laughs> <laughs> He's a really big cat, too. <laughs> is he? How old is he? Um, he is about three years old. Well, he's got a lot to say. Uh, <laughs> does he have any opinions on, uh, on the MK scene? Or, uh, yeah, that's right, we got cat on blast, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's, everybody's asking to nerf the cat. Nerf the cat. And they want to know, does, uh, does Tom Brady cuddle with the cat after, uh, or does he go right to bed? I actually have a picture of him holding a kitten somewhere. <laughs> Oh it, man! It, was, it wasn't my kitten, though. You don't want you don't, you don't want to get that out. Tom Brady's soft on cats. <laughs> um, so anyway, like I was saying, um, one of the things I've noticed about the 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 gaming community as a whole, um, yes, like you said, there's kind of a hazing process for girls to be accepted. Um, if a girl doesn't do well in this scene, um, pretty much she's dismissed. Um, now that you, uh, you actually beat, uh, it's right up my nose, my fucking mic. Is that better there at K7? Yeah, it's all right. Is it all right? Just don't breathe too heavy. I, I, you know what? I smoke a hundred packs a day. I can't not oh, breathe. I said a while, but I don't breathe heavy. Well, I'm fucking, I'm old. <sighs> anyway, the fucking cat. <laughs> anyway, the cat, shut the fuck up, man. I'm like Darth, I'm like Darth Vader here, all right? The cat's got more to say than me, apparently. <laughs> um, he's, saying, he's just talking cat. <laughs> I think the cat wants to put somebody on blast. I understand exactly what the cat says. The cat just said, Tom Brady, you suck. <laughs> I beat your sub-zero. Six-zero. 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 He says, I'll give you the extra one. It ain't going to be five-zero. It'll be six-zero. I'm going to give you an extra one for good measure. <laughs> But, you know, pretty much, like I said, um, girls in the community have always been, let's be brutally honest, looked down upon as scrubs. Um, whether it be Street Fighter or whether it be uh, Mortal Kombat, KOF, Soul Calibur, um, women in the, in the fighting game scene have always been looked down upon as not productive. Um, you got Cayenne, I believe her name is, over in Soul Calibur. You got Q over here uh, in New York who plays Street Fighter. Uh, Sherry Jenix. KO Police, depending on what you want to call it. It could be a boy or a girl. Um, but pretty much, uh, they, they've always looked they, they, they looked down upon. Now, when you go to these tournaments, I noticed that Evo, you did the cosplay. You dressed up as Jade. Uh, <laughs> turning, up, turning a lot of heads. Do you feel that, like... Pretty much by doing stuff like that, that kind of puts you uh, in a position where it still alienates you just a little bit more, per se, because you now are showing your feminine side while playing the game. I mean, do you feel you have to take a manly role? Surprisingly, no. I, I've noticed people are actually a lot nicer to me in cosplay compared to street clothes, where... Um, I can actually talk to someone for a few minutes, go on my way, and a lot of guys will really feel just this sense of entitlement to you <laughs> and, and kind of genuinely get like irritated that you're not returning their interest sometimes. Well, I mean, I, I, I usually tell everybody this is like, uh, you know, usually the people that are in this scene, and I'm sorry for everybody out there that don't like to hear this, you know, usually have aluminum foil wrapped around themselves in a broomstick out in the forest playing Dungeons and Dragons with each other. <laughs> so, you know, they're not out there, you know, quote unquote, meeting women. So when a woman turns around and, and gets in their face, I guess the reaction from a lot of people is, I don't know how to react. 
So you're going to get a lot of mixed reactions. You might get a Rico Suave and you might get the Geek Squad. You know, it all depends on who you're dealing with. Um, the community as a whole, I believe, is welcoming. I mean, what other scene can you say where, where women, gays, trannies, you know, whatever, whatever somebody is, is welcome? You know, um, the one thing I'll say about the MK scene, which I have to say isn't as... as uh, present in the street fighter scene even though it's it's there it's not as accepted it's more of those people are kind of sheltered away unless they're a top player but you know gays in the community uh, let's be realistic you know some of the top players out there happen to be gay I don't give a crap you know whatever floats your boat yeah. uh, but you know for women it's a little bit I almost feel like women are least accepted out of all the straights, gays, you know, the whole the whole pendulum of people. Uh, I still feel I there's a big was, bias. I think it was kind of like you're saying you kind of have to be able to be like one of the guys or to, to be cool and be accepted so you get trolled a little harder for a little longer. Now, as a girl, do you kind of like being trolled? I mean, I hate to say, like, you know, I mean, I know, I remember when you first came onto the scene, you were saying, like, you know, I, I basically ain't here to, I'm here to play the game and be competitive. I'm not here to get some. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I mean, I kind of, now that you've actually fallen into the scene now, you've become, you know, you, you basically have become a pillar to the scene. I mean, one of the first, until Miss Spin from MK3 actually produces herself, as far as I'm concerned, she's, she's, she's fiction. Um, but you're one of the first women that come out beyond uh, Death Girl that have actually played competitively. Do you feel like uh, now you, uh, you've proven yourself? George, you're smoking? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> What's up, Mr. Uh, CD Jr.? So do you feel that, uh, James, do you make exercise? <laughs> what is do I make exercise? Yeah, I make exercise with my hand. <laughs> do you speak English? But, uh, no, pretty much like I was saying, do you feel that, like, you can now let your guard down with people or do you still feel like you have to keep it up? I mean, I look at the scene and I say it's still kind of got a, a level of immaturity. Um, I definitely feel like more like part of the community now and like I can definitely um, be more comfortable around them than I was. I mean, I do get PMs from girls from time to time that are like, oh, I want to go to a tournament, but I'm kind of freaked out. Um, like how I kind of wanted you there at um, WV. I'm, I'm actually going to Mexico for a tournament. Are you doing the, wow. you doing the, the one with Mayo? I, I am, and, and I am depending on Mayo. So. I don't want to. I don't. I don't. I don't want to see you get beheaded and whatnot. You know those Mexicans are fucking crazy down there. I'm, I'm trusting him with my life. <laughs> You'll be fine. You'll be fine. I mean, like I said, you know that from what I, I was trying to get down there, but I did so many tournaments this year that I just economically it's not viable right now for me to go to another one. I'm gonna kind of try to lay low for a little while. I want to focus on the show. Um, Weekly, what I want to do is I want to start getting a lot of people that are uh, that are not the norm on you know quote unquote every show out there. Um, it seems like there's a I guess a a level where everybody's trying to achieve by putting the same five people on the show. One of them being Mr. Brady, you know, CD Juniors, Rio, um, you know, to have these guys always on the show is nice but i'd rather start getting into other players out there getting you under the mail and you have glenn the cat you now who's, who <laughs> does he have a preferred character <laughs> uh, oh gosh um he, he's, he's angry i think he's a scorpion player uh, opposite, <laughs> opposite of brady uh oh watch out tom <laughs> he's mad <laughs> but now uh let me retweet this quick. Now, well, what, what, wait, well, why are you doing that? Let me just get on a quick question for uh, Goldfish over here. I got a question from uh, 
Iron Iron Ermac on Twitter. He asks, "What got Gofish Keeper into the scene?" Um, that would be reading a lot of uh, game FAQs and test your might, and just starting to kind of get to know these people, playing with them, talking to them on forums, and kind of finally wanting to to come out and meet them. I think in a lot of ways the game is uh, really just social for me. <laughs> I mean, I, I do play competitively, but uh, that's probably my favorite part of it at the end of the day. Now, is MK your only game you play, or do you play other fighting games? Virtual Fighter. Oh, you're, like, you're a Virtual Fighter fan. Okay. You're Sarah, Sarah, what character? Sarah. <laughs> How did I know? Oh, wow, well, you called it. Yeah, because I'm Jackie. Yeah. <laughs> Love Jackie. I, I'm actually a loyalist in that game. I'm as bad as 16-bit with Katana. Mm. Like, since the Sega Saturn days, I've been Sarah Bryant. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm ancient. <laughs> yeah, I didn't ask you to show your age on the show now. <laughs> I've been hiding my age for 20 years. <laughs> so now, as far as the, uh, you know, I noticed, like I said, at Evo, uh, the cosplay was something new that you kind of broke out since the tournament thing uh have you done it before or or, or you haven't really it was that the first um i did it at winter brawl i actually had a girlfriend with me who was katana <laughs> and, and she was not a happy katana <laughs> oh she wasn't digging it huh no, no she was not having fun <laughs> well i mean cosplay i mean i will admit this you know you know, I've seen some cosplay where I've seen some 400 pound katanas and I'm like really like you should not I mean then again I've seen 16 bit wearing a katana mask you know, you know so I mean you know to each is his own but you know I'll say for for a white girl with blonde hair you, you made a pretty good jade well, thank you 800 years old still smokes two packs a day that's right original razor there you go. Um, so pretty much, you know, the community has pretty much accepted you. I mean, I, I like I said, from what I've seen at tournaments and whatnot, you know, I won't deny that I've I hear the chit chat, you know, behind, oh I'm gonna blow her up, you know. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, it's it's really good to see women in this uh, in the scene trying to make it grow. I wish more women would get out. I wish more of these Sherry Jennings and, and and Q and you know even KO Police for all I care would get out and start showing some support for Mortal Kombat. Um, with Injustice coming out and the removal of the block button, um, I anticipate more Capcom players maybe maybe jumping over. I don't know about Cayenne. I don't think she's ever going to leave Soul Calibur. But, uh, you know, with the removal of the block button, it's hopefully going to start to attract more of the Capcom scene, hopefully bringing in some of the uh, some of the female Street Fighter players as well. But, you know, I mean, I, I watched, in fact, I watched uh, Sherry Jennings play League of Legends. In fact, if it wasn't for her and her voice, she kind of got that whiny voice going on. But if it wasn't for her in that voice, she kept me up for that drive from New York to Canada to go to Toriyuki. <laughs> uh, I listened to her for nine hours. And pretty much, uh, if it wasn't for her voice, I probably would have fell asleep somewhere on the throughway in New York. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I mean, like I said, I mean, you got a lot of people out here uh, that are in the scene now that are starting to recognize women as actual players and not... You know, I mean, I hate this. I mean, because I'm kind of one of those that fall in the same boat. I mean, I look at women as objects. Sorry, but <laughs> the truth. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, it's one thing to be an object, but it's another thing to be competitive objects. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that kind of, you know, that's that. That's what I like to see. Is I like to see the fact that, you know, women are not just here to be looked at and gawked at. They're actually here to compete. Um, so, I mean, right now, I'm going to give you the floor if you want. If there's anybody out there or, or anybody in the, the MK realm that's pissed you off, done you wrong, angered you in <laughs> any way, shape, or form, besides Glenn the Cat, uh, that you might want to call out, 
Um, and if in the event between now and then on a call out, they decide that they want to chime in, they're more than welcome to. Um, if you don't have anybody, um, I am going to, uh, I'm going to reach out to uh, Gurchap um, mm -hmm. on the stream and I'm going to add him into the call. I do got another question also I got for, okay. for her. Uh, oh, well, let, let me ask it now before you put somebody else on blast that you want to put out there. Um, all right, GoFish, this is from Claude Von Stroke. He asks, how does it feel being one of the only females in this scene? It seems like it could be awkward knowing how creepy guys are. Um, I think I can shrug a lot of it off now. I, it took me a while, but i am got much thicker skin. <laughs> It's like how long? How long do you feel it took a while? It took you a couple of years, a few months. Um, I think by um, MLG Columbus or Power Up, I had just okay. I remember the exact moment it was actually. I was at Power Up, and I saw a sign on the wall. Oh God, this was just embarrassing to be there for this. Um, of a guy in a referee shirt that said, I want you to take a shower. Hmm. And yeah, th there were these posters everywhere of this, of this referee that would say, I want you to wear a clean shirt. I want you to put on deodorant. And I'm going, oh my God, these are grown ass men that, that, that need this, these posters around. This is, this is humiliating to be here. And, and ever since, I don't think I've ever been able to take take it too seriously <laughs> well I mean I, I could say um, speaking from an Evo experience with <laughs> Wonder Chef and, uh, and, and, and Mr. Napalm showering uh, is definitely an option that a lot of the gamers <laughs> out there don't partake in it's kind of a recreational event that they'd much rather not uh, perform in so they just kind of step aside and avoid the shower yeah, um, there's been some real uh, what's the word I'm looking for stink asses out there that uh, literally uh, are just pretty much rancid. I remember Tim Static would stand so close to me. He's like, "I'm not being creepy. You're just the only one who doesn't smell like busted ass here." <laughs> That's what oh, I like sure. to hear. Busted ass. See all you guys out there. You smell like busted ass. I. Well, I not all of them, I'm sure. I mean, I, I don't try to smell them, but... <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> it's a now, problem. <laughs> now, how many creepy men have you ever bumped into in the fighting game scene? Um, that have, like, started following me around, creeping me out. Probably, Probably stalking, three. yeah, whatever. Probably about three. Probably um, what? I think three that I caught, like, following me around my hotel. Is one of them Tom Brady? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> not lately. You don't, to, you don't have to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Got all the creepy people out there. <laughs> so I guess I'm putting the stinky people on blast. Please. Well, to all you stinky people out Please there. Please stop. <laughs> you know, I gave... I gave uh, Wonder Chef, a bar of soap that I advertised on the the first show. I don't have enough soap to go around. I know, I know, I know, Vigilante, you smell like sunshine, but uh, there might be some people out there that say you stink like ash. But, you know, that's, that's, that's one of the things in this scene, which, believe it or not, one of the players that, in my opinion, is one of the top dogs out there, um, and he, he's brought this up to my attention many a times, is Maxter. You know, he kind of he kind of takes that New York Yankee approach to competing, um, and he says, "Why is it that you know people don't get dressed up? Why do they look like who did it and ran when they come to a tournament?" <laughs> and if you watch Max, that when he comes to the tournaments, he always dresses nice for the tournament. He does. You know, it's almost as if he's going to a ballroom, you know, to a ballroom dance to to compete in the uh, the cha cha or merengue or salsa <laughs> or whatever whatever his people do. Nah, Max is waiting for the after party. That's what he's waiting for. He just wants to get done with the game and hit up, hit up the after party. <laughs> well, Max is always at the after party with me. So, I mean, I mean, I will say, I'm, I hung out with uh, with with Tom and, and and Goldfish Keeper and Forever King, 
We wound up uh, going out at around 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning to a bar to play beer pong. Uh, I missed my flight home. <laughs> and we made you miss your flight just to play oh. beer pong. I but at least you got home. on your flight drunk. I did. <laughs> and it was the first time in a year that I've been drinking with Max that Max actually told me I got him drunk finally. It took me a year to do it, but he finally said, Jimmy, Jimmy, I drunk, I drunk. So, I mean, I was, I was proud of that. I may not be able to beat him in the game, but I can beat anybody in this community in drinking. That's an open <laughs> challenge. I did pretty good. No, you did good. I, I got to say, Mr. Quarterback Tom Brady, though, he carried you guys with the, uh, he, he sank like four or five in a row in the beer pong <laughs> while you guys were all running around trying to figure out who's going to drink the next beer. Um, I'm, I'm good at drinking them fast, though. Forever yeah, King, Forever King, no, Forever King like weighs like a fucking year. Forever King weighs like nine pounds, and you know, one drink, and after the second drink, he was already in that milking mode. So, <laughs> but he actually, he was a trooper. He, he he hung out. He you know, he held with us. But yeah. you know, in the end, it was uh, me and Max there that are the Evo beer pong champions of 2012. So <laughs> in 2013. Me and Max to put out an open invitation to anybody that wants to challenge us in beer pong. <laughs> um, so I may not be the MK champion or the KOF or Street Fighter or Marvel Crapcom or any of that other shit. But no, in a few more years you are. Remember, in a few more years, in the future you are. In the future, I, yeah. Well, in the future, I win two Evos in a year. They start making it a, a biannual thing. So, yeah. Um, which you know, speaking of that, not to change the subject too much, but. You know, as far as PL goes, and, and, and everybody's out there knows, and they've seen the stream, and the player one thing, and, you know, CD Juniors, and the Rios, and the Maxters, and, you know, MIT's, Pig the Hut, anybody that was out there that watched Evo, nobody made an excuse for lo losing. Um, it's not enough with PL there, Big D. Um, reality is this, save your tears for the funerals and the weddings, but don't save them for tournaments. I don't want to hear the crying about, you know, a player one advantage when it had nothing to do with the match. Um, the guy impressed me by winning his second Evo in a row. I will say, you know, and, you know, I got no quote unquote ill words for him, but I will say this, his attitude. His attitude, he's got a piss poor attitude. And every time he impresses me, he does something else to counteract it and make me go, damn, this is just a dumb motherfucker. Um, he won Evo. Whether he lost or won that, that VXG down in the Caribbean, which, by the way, shout outs to Vincent down in uh, the Trinidad there, uh, the Trinidadian guys took uh, third and fourth place. Um, I knew. You know, I had put a bounty on him before I rescinded it to the Trinidadian guys um, because I knew these guys are an untouched part of the world. Um, a lot of the people out there basically assume that America and Europe are the only places that produce good players. Uh, the Caribbean islands, while not 100% on par with us, um, they definitely uh, they showed that they're, they are a force to be reckoned with. I would love to see an outfit like MLG actually break down and try to do a true world tournament. And, you know, if they could fly people from France to here, they could fly people from the Caribbean, South America, UK, and, you know, some US guys to actually form a true world tournament to find out who's the best players out there. Um, unfortunately, I'm a firm believer in at this point in stage of the game, there is no true champion. Yes, PL won Evo There's twice. There's no denying that, and he played phenomenal. Um, CD Jr., Rio, 16-bit, uh, Tom Brady, uh, MIT, Denzel, these guys also produced. Um, there's so many tournaments that go on, and at this high level of play, you know, today you lose the PL, tomorrow you beat PL. Doesn't make you better or worse. Um, we're in a competitive area, uh, or a competitive scene, should I say, where everybody wants to be crowned the best. To be honest, I don't think there can be a best. Um, 
only for the simple fact that as much as I love this game, there's too much random stuff in yeah. which you know, in which that you know, it's unstoppable. Whether it be player one advantage, uh, you know, or or NRS's versions of fixing a game, which was armor, you know, <laughs> putting armor on things on wake ups, uh, and everybody's always asked me, why do you use Baraka? You know, the reason I use Baraka is because you know what, I don't care about winning. You know, I go to tournaments to drink and have fun. Um, the fact that I use Baraka and, you know, I mean, I know one man's out there and, 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 and Cuban who are really good Baraka players, but... Toxic. What's that? Oh, I wanted to throw out Toxic. <laughs> um, and basically, they, you know, they're really good Baraka players. Yes, one man. Real men use Baraka, but... I can't join VVV because you drink and have fun. Yes, I know. That's apparently a, a rule number one and rule number two of joining VVV is having fun and drinking. Um, but, you know, with that said, you know, I use Baraka simply for the fact nobody uses them. You know, there's not too many people out there that are out in the competitive scene in the U.S. that are using them. I know THTB was using them for a while. I know Dark Natus has used them for a while. I know Shadow Zero, uh, J360, and Ryu. You know, guys have dabbled with them, but, when, you know, when it came time for tournament, you know, pretty much nobody, you know, nobody wanted to go with them. And, you know, I I can honestly say I've proven he can never win a tournament because he can't beat Cabals and he can't beat Kenshi's. Um, in fact, those are the two characters. I mean, you know, Sunk, who uh, came at me with Cabal and Evo, just basically blew me out of the water and I tried to stay loyal to a point and it just don't work. And then another guy, I don't know what his name is, but he's one of the Chilean guys that came up. Uh, he used Kenshi on me and pretty much blew me up. So, I mean, the game itself, as fun as it is, could it uh, could have been programmed better to have more of a competitive edge to it? Yes. Is it an enjoyable game? Yeah, it is. Um, would I bet my life on a game of MK9? No. You got a better chance of me betting my life on MK2 or 1. But, uh, you know, overall, I got to say, the competitive scene now has expanded to the Caribbean islands and South America, which really doesn't get much, uh, which really doesn't get much playtime as far as, uh, as far as being considered top players. So, you know, now I think that VXG and, and PL getting blown up after only winning EVO, what, two weeks ago, uh, pretty much just proves the point that anybody, whether you consider yourself a scrub or you consider yourself one of the top guys, um, you know, anybody can beat anybody on any given day. Um, basically, for now, what I'm going to do is... Wait, 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 wait. I got a question for you, James. Got a question okay. for you, all right? It's from uh, Clevon Stoke. He says, technically, PL wasn't bitching about it. He, he just asked to switch off after losing. Triforce was going nuts. He wants your thoughts on that. Uh, Triforce is Triforce. Triforce is the Don King of managing players. I love the guy. I know his heart's in the right, you know, his, his, his intent is in the right spot. Um... I mean, I know from from PL experiences in the past, I'm sure he wasn't happy when the Dominican Gross told him, no, I'm not switching sides. Um, can I blame him for not switching sides? No. You know, I mean, everybody's always, I, I mean, I heard them running through the rules and, you know, the, the American version of rules, but I can't remember for the life of me somebody actually pulling that card out. Yeah, neither do I. In a tournament. And if that's the case, if anybody wants to say that player one had the advantage and that, you know, uh, basically gross only won because you're on the player one side, well, then I guess the same could be said about PL because he's won both of his evils on the player one side. So, I mean, if player one advantage actually makes a difference in a fight, which, you know what, unless it's a, a matter of just simple footsies, uh, from the way I, when I watched the match between uh, 
between Gross and him, there wasn't much footsies. I mean, a couple of down ones, but it was more back threes into teleport punches and, you know, a lot of teleporting into the 2 1 2 1 2 stuff. So I really think it was irrelevant. Now, as far as PL asking for it, I mean, the only thing I can think of is that, you know, reality is he felt, I guess, at that point, he needed it. To sound like Maxter, he needed it. Um, that was that that could have gave him an advantage, or maybe it was just psychological. You know, like I said, I don't uh, I don't begrudge him for asking, but from what I'm hearing, or should I say, what I heard on the stream, was that you know after he took his loss, he didn't even shake Gross's hand and he just stormed out. Uh, that's a little bit disappointing. Um, I don't mind sore losers, believe it or not. But sore winners, I do mind. But a sore loser when you're a champ is a different story. I mean, he, I, I, I can't take and nor can anybody else that he's a top player. You know, but the, fa but the simple fact that he would storm out and not even acknowledge the guys that won is kind of bullshitty. Um, no handshake, nothing. Just walked out the door from what I'm told. Now, I wasn't there, obviously, or I'd be able to tell you from experience. Now, as far as uh, Triforce making all the excuses in the world for him, he ain't doing nothing else that anybody else that worked, quote-unquote, damage control for somebody would do. Um, uh, we lost Goldfish just now. Did we? Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh. All right. So, guys, we dropped Goldfish right now. Um, I am going to try to hit her up one more time and add her in. Oh. Hello. Right. I got disconnected. Yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add you in. I'm gonna hang up and call you right back. Okay. All right. All right. Let me add her back in here. But I mean, I can't. You know, like I said, I, I mean, I can't take nothing away from PL. He is truly a great player. You know, he definitely, he's definitely one of the top players, if not the top player out there next to CD Jr. and Rio. But, you know, players like Pig the Hut, you know, who happened to break my balls at, uh, at Evo, telling me, remembered something from like 1932 that I said about him not making top 32. But you know what? When he said it to me, I went back home, I listened to the uh, KTP show, and he was right. I did say it. Um, you know, players like that, you know, that have improved so much you know, KT Smith back in the day, he, uh, you know, he came onto the scene as a, a mediocre player to being top eight in, in, in uh, MLG. Uh, you know, these players, you know, the way they play, the way you hold yourself is how people are going to look at you. And I hate to say it, you know, like I said, when it comes to PL, people just kind of, uh, they, they take that great player but shitty attitude yeah you, you know and I wish it wasn't that way and I, you know maybe uh, his manager you know whatever he whatever Triforce calls himself his developmental agent um, can kind of try to really drill it into him that you know the least you say the better you are because you know when you say shit it just kind of it's just fucked up. <laughs> it's just, I mean, I got, I got pictures of him, you know, pretty much laying on the floor in Evo with the trophy in front of him. And I kind of was like, that's so arrogant. But you got to respect it to a degree. You know, you just won Evo, but you know what? Evo's over. You went down the VXG. People are telling me that you didn't even try at the first MLG, that you were just scoping people out. Please, you know... Pinocchio was a white guy, not a black dude. So I don't want to see another Pinocchio out there. Don't bullshit me and tell me that you went to Evo with, you know, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars on the line and you said, you know what, I don't even want to win the fucking money. I'm just here to turn around and scope players out. You know, with that kind of money on the line, everybody was out to win. Um, All right, well, let me, let's get off the subject of that for a little bit right now. We'll get back on that later on about the whole PL thing. Yeah. 
Um, I have another question. This is going for Goldfish right now. This is coming from uh, VSM for Lease. You can tune in to them tomorrow. Also at on the Wu Lei show tomorrow night at midnight. His question is: Someone told me that Goldfish thought I was hitting on her at Winter Brawl. Is this true? Um, I do not recall. She um, does not recall. Apparently, um, apparently, if he was hitting on you, it wasn't that good of an effort. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm sorry, but you know, it's it comes up a couple of times a tournament. It, it's hard to to remember everybody. Do you remember um, what this piece looks like? No. Damn. I'm sorry. I'm I'm. It, that was my first tournament. <laughs> Wow. Well, Felice you got your answer, man. She just does not remember your ass. I'm so sorry. Well, I'm going to, uh, you know what? You continue this a little bit. I'm going to mute myself for a second. I am going to reach out to uh, Gerchap from MKU, see if he's ready to pick up, and we're going to get him in and on the call in the next, next five minutes. <laughs> Not a problem. Now, uh, go fish. Now, let's get back on the subject of anybody particularly that you wanted to put on blast in the community. Um, guys, no. girls, uh, <laughs> A's, trainees, uh, I don't know, whatever, <laughs> whatever's out there these days, you can put them on blast. Um, define blast someone you want to call out, someone you want to talk smack about. I, I don't know, anybody. Um, you got a problem? I, I, uh, I guess I'm really, I would love to see Bird Songs come out to tournaments because she has a really, really great jade. And, huh. um, I, I don't know. Uh, if she wants to, like, first to five me in a jade mirror, I'll donate $50 to her coming out to the next tourney she can. Now, what's her name again? Bird songs. Bird song. I have have not heard that. Is she on the forums? Yep, she's she's a really sweet girl, really great Jade, and I, she I'd from? love to see her. I'm not a hundred percent at the moment. <laughs> okay. We've only played a couple of times. Oh, I got I got people vouching for her. Yeah, she, she's pretty good. Yeah, yeah she's I, I never great. go to the new forums. So I never even heard of her before, so I had no fucking idea who the hell she was. But, um, yeah, first uh, five mirror, I'll donate $50 to her coming out and repping Jade with me. <laughs> nice. Stop your sick Jade mirror. Um, um kind of nothing to lose, so <laughs> why not, right? <laughs> first of all, yo, we got to get that on stream, man. We never get a, a, a female match in MK <laughs> on stream, man. Uh, it would be the first money match, female versus female. It would be better than the... Uh, <laughs> Q versus Sherry Jennings at Evo, which wound up being a blowout because uh, Sherry had uh, ex-New Yorker Benedict Arnold, Justin Wong, coaching her in the corner. <laughs> now, what was your thoughts on um, that match there, Gofish? Did you happen to witness it or watch that that match between them two? I, I did not, no. That, but you did hear about them having a money match? Mm-mm. You didn't. How much was the money match? Was it like a hundred dollars or something? Yeah, it was like it was about a hundred bucks. They said. Okay. See, go fishing. Gotta start playing Capcom games now. So you're getting, you know, getting a loop. I gotta. I I just gotta stock Justin Wong harder. I think. <laughs> <laughs> now the, you're gonna be the Justin Wong, Wong killer. Wong, please, it'll be a wrap. <laughs> huh? I said you're gonna be the Justin Wong killer for now on. No matter what game he plays, you get good at all the Capcom games and blow him up in that too. <laughs> I think you'll make Justin Wong retire if you beat him in one of his Capcom games. I'm a... He would quit in a minute if he lost in, to a girl in, a, in, in any Capcom game. Yeah, then you could be like, yeah, you remember me? I beat your ass in Mortal Kombat. And he's like, oh, damn. That, that's it. I love Justin, though. <laughs> I like Justin also. I speak to him every now and then on Twitter and stuff. He's he's a really cool dude. 
Well, with that said, I'm going to let Goldfish keep a go. She's challenging to a money match. Uh, what's this girl's name? Um, well, it's not money on her part, but to come out and and represent Jade at the tournament. <laughs> so they want to they want to do a, a first to five uh, winner. I, I guess loser donates money or both yeah. parties. Um, no. If she beats me, I just donate fifty uh, fifty dollars to her coming out to the next tournament. If if she doesn't, uh, just good games. <laughs> Wow, one way. It's going one way. One, oh, one way. Gotta, you got to love that. I give mad respect for that. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, with that said, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna let Goldfish go. I mean, you, you're, like I said, you're more than welcome to stick around if you want. I'm not kicking Oh, wait. We out. have someone else who wants the money match. Uh, we got Felice's girl that want a money match Goldfish. Oh, all right. Oh, let me find out. <laughs> wow, you put him on blast, and now he's got his girl to fight his battle for him? <laughs> Felice's girl wants to do a 50 money match. Okay. <laughs> oh, shit. Who did she play? I think Sundell. Yeah, I believe Sundell. Cause you, that's, he learned Sundell because of her. Oh, that, that's a fun match for Jade. What is it? Uh, yeah, that'll be fun. Nice. DG, DZG Sonic Fox wants to <laughs> money match you. Jade Mira. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Girl on girl action, apparently. Sonic Fox uh, is the kid that won um, ECT. Sonic Fox, yeah, I know. The young Buck. I only, I, I'm only doing girls right now. Uh, it's like hey, girl, girl I don't no judge. Guys. I don't judge nobody in this community. <laughs> hey, we got a couple. <laughs> Anyway, like I said, I'm uh, you know I'm gonna move on to the next part. Um, you're more than welcome to stick around if you want. If you want to drop off, you're more than welcome to drop off. I'll give you a few minutes to tell everybody goodbye. Um, you can you know if, if anybody wants to get in contact with you, uh, casuals or anything on or online, you can uh, give yourself uh, I guess a shout out um, where they can contact you. And with that said, I'm, I'm glad you came on the show. Um, I think you're the, you are the first woman that's been on our show. Um, yes. I'm actually a lot tamer when a woman's around. I'm usually a really bad potty mouth. <laughs> but uh, because you're here, you kind of put me in check. So, um, And for now, if you want, I'll give you the floor. Uh, thank you. Um, I would definitely love to see more girls out on the tournament scene. And um, I guess you can just PM me on Test Your Might. There, there was a forum for like 11 minutes for girls, but that's gone now. What so. happened to that? Illuminati. Oh, uh, you gotta be kidding me. Illuminati, the Illuminati deleted it? Illuminati deleted it. See this bullshit? The Illuminati wow, taking over, man. Wow, you fucking serious? <laughs> Yeah, I got, like, trolled to death in 11 minutes. Holy shit, and they just shut it down? Yeah. <laughs> wow, even the women so, don't have voices, a man. Woman, What's a going woman's on here? Forum, a yeah. woman's forum got deleted for the simple fact, why? Because guys couldn't keep their penises in their pants. <laughs> and they thought it was, you know, they thought it was a dating service. The guys got a little too damn happy. Damn, guys, you kind of fucked that up, man. But um, I would love to see more girls feel more more comfortable to come out and compete. And, um, so, yeah, I guess there's just the PMs on test your mind. I check it at least once a day. Do you, go to, think, uh, do you go to MKU at all? I locked myself out of MKU. <laughs> well, you got to get yourself back over there and check it out, too. Because, you know what, I look at that site and it's just as friendly as, as test your mind. If, in my opinion, if not more so, um, it's a great site to check out. Um, it's not as serious, hardcore players. It's it's kind of treated more of a casual site. But um, you know, I will say this: I've come over there. I've I've been there for about a year, and I think I posted maybe ten posts. And now I have to say, the people are very welcoming. Um, the the guy who runs the site is, is, is a good guy. I'm going to have him on in a second. Um, and pretty much 
there's a need for everybody to kind of branch around to both sites. Um, I don't like the fact that people go to tournaments. I mean, we hung out with Forever King, who happens to be a guy of MKU. He's uh, a really sweet guy. But you wouldn't know that, you know, because if you don't, if you don't go to the tournaments or you don't really interact with people too much, there's kind of this separation anxiety going on that they're still competing against each other rather than just trying to coexist with one another. Um, I know site owners might disagree with me, or should I say Illuminati might disagree with me, but the fact of the matter is, no person, whether it be me, Gerchap, Storm, Illuminati, Dark Natus, or Goldfish Keeper, none of us control, especially Goldfish Keeper, you don't control this team. <laughs> no. You know, but nobody controls this team. The community is based off of the community, not off of the website. Um, when the websites can agree to agree with each other, that's when this community is going to grow. Um, and with that said, um, my next guest I have here is uh, goes by the name of Gerchap. He's the owner of Mortal Kombat United. Um, basically a site that's kind of gone under the radar for a while. Um, not to take anything away from MKU or to take anything away from Test Jumai. But the fact of the matter is... Uh, there has been beefs and problems in the past, and I'm not trying to re-rip a Band-Aid off of, of uh, an already healed wound, but the fact of the matter is uh, there is still unspoken, uh, unspoken beef, if you will, between the sites. Um, a lot of people just want to pretend it away. Um, unfortunately, it's something that's got to be dealt with, especially with a game like uh, Injustice coming down the line, uh, where a lot more sites are going to start to pop up, I can guarantee you. And I can also guarantee you, you know, Shurukins and, and, and other Capcom-related sites are going to gravitate towards this game a little bit. So we really kind of need to hunker down and try to keep the community intact and not fractioning, fractioning off to other sites um, and with that without further ado I want to introduce everybody to uh, to Gerchap the owner of uh, Mortal Kombat United Gerchap you there hey guys uh, how you guys doing tonight uh, hopefully you're doing fine yeah we're all good we're all good, we're all good. yeah I've been uh, I've been on since the show started pretty good stuff <laughs> and that, that's a nice cat <laughs> That's goldfish cat. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna cut right to the chase. Um, we all know that there's been beef between uh, MKU and Test Jemite over the years. For for those of us like myself who kind of went MIA for about ten years in the scene, what uh, what is your perspective on what actually transpired that actually caused the fractioning of the site? Uh, you know, first of all, probably you don't know the, the, you know, like the whole history about the, about Mortal Kombat, why we created it. Uh, it was just, uh, it was just, um, I don't know. I mean, just, uh, see the name United, you know, we just try to keep everyone united because, uh, we went from, uh, from Mortal Kombat Online.com, MKO to, uh, MKAC.com, MKA Central.com. Um, and one day, this guy, all of a sudden, he shot, he just shut it up, shut it off, you know. Um, I remember the next day, I asked uh, my friend Bobby Blaze. He was the administrator in that website, and he didn't know what was happening. So I remember I told him, uh, you know, man, we have a lot of friends there. And to be honest, James, uh, you know, you get during all this time, you know, you get to like the people, love the community. Um, so I told Bobby Blaze, I asked him, what do we need to create a site? He told me uh, some money and knowledge, you know. I told him, you know, like, if you can't do it, I'll try to put the money. And we did it. Uh, we started working on, on MKU at uh, about 12 at noon. Uh, I remember I had to go to work. 
uh, but I was on the cell phone with Bobby Blaze, and uh, our first member was uh, Buya. I don't know if you guys know him. Uh, he was the one, yeah, he was the one who helped us uh, test the site and everything. Uh, and just to make the story short, uh, in less than 24 hours, we had uh, MKU running. Um, and um, to think about the name, we didn't have to think a lot because it was clear that we created this website just to be united. You know, uh, we created it uh, September 2008. And uh, that's how, you know, Mortal Kombat came to exist. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's been, uh, it's been hard. Um, in MKU, actually, I started, I'm, I'm going to start with, you know, like myself, how I got, you know, how I got into the MK scene, so you guys understand why uh, I'm still running MKU. Um, I joined Mortal Kombat Online in, uh, I believe, November 2005. Damn. And, yeah, and uh, since then, I've been online, I would say, 29 days out of 30 days in a month. You know, it's been it's been uh, almost five years, uh, seven years that I've been online. I met a lot of people. I've I made a, like very very good friends, and uh, so you know, like we we used to chill in Mortal Kombat online, but we didn't really like that website. Uh, we went from that website to the one that I mentioned, uh, Mortal Kombat um, Central dot com, and. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I got to love the community. Uh, we left that website. We created Mortal Kombat United. Uh, it was very hard to pick the staff because everyone was my friend. You know what I mean? Like I had a, I, I needed to pick six moderators, but uh, 20 of them were my friends. You know what I mean? It was, it was really hard. Um, but uh, I believe we have worked very hard to keep Mortal, Mortal Kombat United running. And uh, till this day, you know, we're, we're doing a lot for that website. Um, I have a lot of friends, but I also have a lot of people who hate MKU. And uh, to be honest, and this is the first time that I'm going to tell people about it, uh, I don't even know why uh, people has this hate towards MKU if I haven't done anything but try to keep the community together. Um, I remember when I just opened the website, uh, you never going to see me with ego. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm not doing this because of fame. I'm not doing this because of money. I'm doing this because uh, I like Bobby Blaze. I like Dark Tracks, Wiroshi, Mace Wynn, The Duke. You know, I like all these guys. And uh, and because of that love to the community, I wanted to keep everyone together, everyone in, in, in one place. Um, we opened it uh, after a year and a half or two, uh, you know, like, you know the story. Uh, then uh, this guy's created um, Mortal Kombat Empires. Then they changed the name to testyourmind.com. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of people think that, I, that I, you know, that I hate them because they left the website. Uh, I don't hate them, you know. I don't hate him, but that's uh, probably one question that you're going to ask. I'm going to let you ask me. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, like I said, I mean, I, I originally, when I came back to the scene, uh, you know, once, once, I, once I downloaded the beta version of, uh, or whatever, the trial version of MK9, I said, you know, uh, maybe I should uh, join a scene again. Now, I originally, you know, now I'm going back many, many moons ago, I was one of the original MK sites, which was Fighter Edge back in the early 90s. And the only other person that we competed with was uh, TRMK, which is still around. Right. Um, but pretty much from that point, uh, you know, I know what it's like to juggle a lot of the, the emo mentality, what I call the generation P, the pussy generation, um, of everybody wanting to have a say in, in, in what happens. Um, you know, but, you know, what, what I did learn 
and it also is what turned me off from this scene was the attitudes that come along with the with a lot of the people out there who want to put themselves in positions as if they are spokesmen for the community or leaders of the community um you know the whole point of and, and this is what kind of gravitated me towards united was i liked the, the word united i said you know what now in the beginning i was i was dick riding really hard on on pl and you know i saw a lot of negativity getting thrown my way on mku but Tessa Mike was kind of chuckling at it, saying, "Ha ha, you know, paper legend with the plastic, with the paper belt, and all that." <laughs> but I was getting, I was getting feedback from, uh, from more so the Ohio guys on MKU, like Mace Wind and them, who were kind of like, you know, "Hey, why are you trolling this kid?" But then, you know what? When I went out to Ohio and I met some of these guys, I mean, like I said, you know, Forever King was a troll on me for a little while. But once we all started talking and everything. You know, all that bullshit gets pushed aside. Um, but one thing that's always been true about this scene is there are people out there, there there's, and there's always going to be people out there that have ulterior motives. You know, people that claim people that claim that they're part, you know, they're for the community, they're for the scene, um, but in reality, they're, they're there for their own egos. Um, but you know what I what I from returning to MKU after a while of not being around there, you know since putting this show on, everybody on the show has been supportive. I mean everybody on the site's been supportive of the show. Uh, Widoshi, you, Mace Wind, uh, you know Dark Tracks, you know everybody, you know Forever King, everybody straight down the line. It isn't like a a moderator thing where like the moderators see it and they're like, oh my God, they're going after Test Your Might. I'm not here to go after Test Your Might. You know, what I want to do is I want, you know, the sites to actually unite together. Um, I've spoken with uh, Tim Regan, uh, K-Frog, um, in, in great length about making these sites basically, uh, if not a one site, make a portal that will lead you to both to show that there's some unity between the sites. Um, you know, I know a lot of people seem to say that MKU is more of a casual and Test Your Might is more of the competitive side. I personally beg to differ because, I mean, I've seen Detroit balling on MKU, Forever King on, on MKU, M2 Dave. You know, I, I, you know, a lot of people that are competitive players that have come from that site. So to sit there and say, you know, the only negative thing I can say about your site is that damn shout box. You know, that shout box is, in my opinion, what kills your site. Because I don't have to put any text or anything I find in a forum page. I could talk about it right away on a shout box. And then that information is fed to all the people that are listening. And then it kind of dies in the shout box. Um... The, as far as what you guys offer, you know, I see K7 saying that MKU doesn't offer much beyond a shout box. But you know what? The funny thing is, it ain't about the shout, shout box. It's about the community. Um, there's a lot of people there that don't go to Test Your Might and vice versa. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if there's a portal where people can actually get to one another without the boundaries of Test Your Might and MKU being basically the walls that keep them from each other. I mean, you know, I mean, we've heard trash talk, you know, VSM over the, the last year has heard trash talk from like, say, Forever King, you know, and the Ohio guys when we went out to, uh, what was it, Summer Jam or Seasons Beatings, whatever it was. And basically, when everybody meets us, they're like, wow, you know what? Our perception of what you are is different. So, you know, you wind up becoming friends with a guy, but then when you go your own ways, you back, you basically both go your own ways on websites and don't talk no more. Right. You know, and that's one of the things that, that kind of turns my stomach. That, you know, you can go to a tournament and hang out in a room full of MKU guys, but when you go back home, you don't even, make, you don't even want to mention it, you know, or, or vice versa with MKU, don't want to mention it to hang out with Test Your Mic guys. 
Um, that needs to change in order for the scene to actually grow. There's a lot of things that needs to ha need to happen for the MK community as a whole to grow. Um, you know, I'm not going to really hit up on all the other things, but we'll just say the level of maturity is not there. Um, that's something that um, has to change. And James is not making the situation more serious than it is, Justin. Um, the situation is exactly what it is. You know, this scene is very fractured. You know, because of the fact that, you know, there's 8,000 members on... Uh, on, on Test Your Might and 3,000 members on uh, MKU doesn't change the fact that as a whole we're not a united community. Um, if you look at the Capcom scene, they have their rivalries, they have their bickering, but it's only about gameplay. It's not about community. You know, they come out with 500 people turnouts, we come out with 50. Um, there's not communication as far as, you know, players on MKU should be able to turn around and say, hey, you know, hey, James MK, I know you're over at Test Your Might. Are you going to this tournament down in Virginia? Can I hop a ride with you? Mm -hmm. You know, but you don't see that, you know. The MKU van, the Test Your Might van, they both pull up separate. Um, there's a lot that can change. And, you know, people want to say that I'm, I'm, I'm ripping a Band-Aid off. But, you know what, if I am, so be it. Let me be the one to rip the Band-Aid off and tell you, look, you know what, if everybody wants to hate me for it, to be honest, I could give two shits. Mm -hmm. You know, I truly am about the community. I have no gain from this. I'm not a top player. I'm a 40-something-year-old band mm -hmm. that just wants to see a community united before I do my disappearing act. Mm -hmm. Um... Now, as far as uh, Gurchap, I know you were saying that, you know, uh, it kind of, I guess it kind of caught you off guard when this whole thing just kind of happened. <laughs> right. Um, what, uh, I mean, from your take, what, what exactly was it that, I guess, changed that made people want to go off and do their own thing? I mean, were you like a, a little Hitler or? Yeah. Um. You know that I, I've been uh, I've been told like so many so many things, and uh, to be honest, bro, it's only between Storms and myself. I would include Bond as well. They we know the re the, the you know we know the truth. You know, a lot of people can make up stories. I don't know if people are making up stories, but what I can tell you is that I, I've been opened to any idea you can bring to the table. MKU, it is MKU because the open dialogue we have in the staff. Um, if the newest moderator has an idea, I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm going to listen to him, you know? Uh, I've heard that uh, Storms used to say or used to bring ideas to me and Bobby Blaze and I, we ignored the ideas that is uh that's not true you know i don't know if storm said those things i'm not here to accuse people you know i'm just here to tell to tell you and tell all the people all the viewers what i've been told and i'm telling you here there are i would say like 80 viewers right now and and you guys i'm here to tell you guys that uh uh storms wanted his own website because he told me he sent me a, he sent me an, an email saying uh, uh, I'm sorry Gertrude, but uh, I've you know I wanted a, I wanted an MK site from a long you know since a long time ago and I'm finally doing it you know there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with that uh, they started building that website without me knowing that what it got me you know like pissed I was pissed at them because I used to you know, I trusted those guys. We used to be a team. We worked together. You know what I mean? I, with the current team that I have right now, with uh, Dark Tracks, um, Art Magus, with Oshi, with these guys, whatever I'm thinking, I put them in there, you know, because we are a team. You know, I never, I never pick up a mod by myself. If I want to as a mod, I'm going to ask all of them in the staff that's how i work that's how i've been working since we started the website uh 
but uh, some people some people are saying that uh, that uh, I ignored the ideas and uh, I didn't do that. Nobody told me their ideas. If they had ideas, if I didn't hear them, you know, like I, I don't know, I'm lost. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, to tell you the truth, it was me the one who spoke with Bon and Storms about uh, two years ago in Philadelphia. We went there for a we went there for a, um, for a tournament. It was uh, MKDC still, and uh, I asked them to talk because uh, things like this you can't just ignore them. You know what I mean? Uh, I told them, "Oh, we need to talk." I was polite. If you you know if you know me, uh, you might say that I'm the coolest person. You know what I mean? Because I'm gonna get you a beer. I'm gonna get you a cigarette. You know what I mean? I, I try to be nice because because that's the way I am. I don't. I, I'm not fake. But uh, but anyway, I, I I asked them and we shaked hands. You know that was the way for me to tell them. You know, like uh, if something happened. It already happened. Now let's move forward. Because the thing is, when when you think about this, it's not healthy for the whole community. Now I have people sending PMs to me, say, uh, telling me, "Oh, Gertrude, I'm gonna be in test your mind, but uh, this is my main home." You know, like, "Oh, Gertrude, I want you to know that I'm not going to test your mind." People, you are free to do whatever you want. You are free to go to MKO, Test Your Mind, all those sites. Those sites are there. Uh, Test Your Mind are doing great. They're doing great. They have good information there. That's a that's a good website. Uh, I've been in the website. It is for me. It's a it's a little too hard to navigate in the website, you know. But uh, but they're doing they're they're doing really good. They know their thing. Uh, in MKU, we are doing good. I know the traffic we have. Um, probably doesn't really show because of the damn chatbots, like you said, James. Um, it doesn't really show the traffic we have, but we have people in the daily basis. Um, all that situation happened. Uh, it was gonna happen no matter what because uh, Storms told me he wanted uh, he wanted his his website. He wanted his own website, and uh, before he created Test Your Mind, he sent me a PM asking me if I wanted to sell half of the of MKU. He wanted to be a co-owner. But at that time, uh, you know, like I, I, I didn't want to, you know, and I just I just told him that uh that no problem in the future, you know what I mean? But uh but no that's the that's the reality and uh, <laughs> that's big. And that's that's the truth. I'm not here like I said, I'm not here to make up stories because there is a lot of people uh listening to me right now and there is uh you know, like you're there as a witness that I, what I'm saying, I, I can back it up anytime, any day. Uh, but that, that's the truth. I want you guys to know that I don't hate Taste Your Might. When I met with Storms, Bond, Shock, um, um, I didn't meet Phil. I mean, uh, Tim. But I, you know, those guys, they were cool. They were cool. Um, we, we, had a, we had a talk, probably like a 30-minute talk. Uh, Tom Brady was there, and he came back. He can back me up that I'm not saying any. I'm not saying like like BS right now. Uh, he was there, seated with us, in the lobby in the hotel. Uh, the things that I'm saying to you right now are the things that I told Storms and Bond. Uh, I don't hate him. I like Bond. You know, he's a uh, he's a uh, little Mexican. <laughs> um, but uh, but I don't hate him. You know, they're doing they're doing really great. Uh, MKU is doing is doing what we are doing what we can. We're not trying here to compete because when you compete is when you do things wrong. You know, like we try, we have our agenda. Uh, like right now, we have some plans for the future for MKU. We try to what we try to do is we try to do we're, we're gonna try to make the website a little easier for everyone to navigate. We're gonna try to have more information. I know that we need. I know we have to work. A lot. Uh, MKU is not the way I really want. Hopefully, it's gonna get it's gonna get there. But uh, I have uh, 12, 15 people working really hard. Uh, with Oshi is killing it with graphics. Yeah, and, I gotta uh, with, say he does some great graphics. Yeah. yeah. You know, with, with Oshi, and you know what? I'm going to uh, I'm going to suggest with Oshi to make uh, 
some graphics for your for your show you know put up some some graphics in here if you want you know he you know that's the thing if you ask Widoshi he doesn't mind if you are a test your mic guy or if you are a MKO guy well me, if you me are, personally I'm a nomad because test your mic basically spit in my face so I mean they can say what they <laughs> want at the end of the day but we all know the saga around the first episode and you know I was basically put on blast being told that what kind of friend would do that to me and you know I reiterate well what kind of friend would turn around and stab me in the back which happened before as well we won't delve into the MLG saga but reality is this when I ask people to cover me they basically said they're doing what they got to do for the community now a friend to me don't give a shit about the community all right and I'm sorry if that's the cold harsh reality when I ask people to cover for me Everybody had dollar signs in their eyes that MLG was going to pay their asses. And now that they all got shit, and I, and I got the MLG owner or vice president to apologize to me, everybody just wanted to sweep it under the rug as a misunderstanding. But reality is this. They say that I didn't have their back for what they asked, but they didn't have my back for what I asked. So basically, in a nutshell, Test Your Mike could ban me for all I care. What comes around goes around and basically deal with it. It's basically my answer. You know, like that's a, that's exactly that's exactly what I think. Um, you know, like test your mind. Um, you know, like I I don't really have anything bad to say about those guys. Uh, like I said, I know how hard it is to run a website. I know how hard it is to deal with a lot of people. Uh, first of all, you can't please every single person. You know. And I get a PMs all the time, like, oh, I got banned, I got banned, I got banned, you know, like all the time. But uh, they're doing, they're doing their thing right there. They're doing, they're doing great. Uh, they have good exposure right now. Um, again, uh, in MKU, we do things because we like the community. And uh, f you know, a big example is uh, with the graphics. If you ask, if you ask Widoshi, Widoshi, can you can you do this for me for my show, or can you do this for you know, or can you do a signature, blah blah blah? He's gonna do it. He's not gonna ask. Oh, do you go to Test Your Mind, or do you go to MKO, do you go to any other forum? Uh, he just do it because first of all, because uh, he's a very talented person, and uh, he does love what he does. But uh, but uh, I mean, like there is no beef in my part. Um, there is no, there is no hate. What I tell the people in the staff is, you guys can go to test your mind. You guys can post there, but remember that you work for MKU. You know what I mean? Don't forget, don't forget an IR cigarette. <laughs> don't forget you work in MKU. You know, let's try to get this place uh, a better place for everyone. Like right now, I'm I'm getting some feedback. Some people they're saying about navigation in Mortal Kombat United, yeah. Uh, that's uh, one of the first things in our agenda, guys. Uh, we're gonna try to upgrade to a better engine in, uh, in Mortal Kombat United. Probably, probably is not gonna look as, as you know, like as nice as it looks right now. Probably is gonna look a little, a little more simple, but it's gonna be like easier to navigate. Uh, it's still in the plans, it's still in the works. Uh, uh, Dark Tracks, Widoshi, the Ark, um, Arch Magus. The, these guys are leading a very good team, very talented team. Uh, I have uh, Mid Hook killing it. He's go. He's about to post 700 combos for Baraka. Uh, he's doing it. I don't know if people is gonna like it, but he's doing it because he likes it, and he's gonna try to uh, hook up the community with those combos. Uh, uh, Blake. He, you know, like he, he has his shows. He tries to keep the the community pumped up. You know, he, he has players in his show, in his uh, streams. Not uh, not just MKUers. He has MK players in the show. It don't matter what what side you belong. First of all, there is no I belong to this side or I belong to another side. You know, I belong to MK com to the MK community. You know, and to be honest, guys, I'm not playing Mortal Kombat right now. Because uh, something happened, I had to go to Guatemala for six months. Uh, I was there for so long. The internet there is not as good as in in America. I couldn't play, so I I kind of like I'm not playing Mortal Kombat. But yes, I'm still paying the. I'm 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 trying to I'm trying to keep up with the with the bills with the fee, 
so for everyone to have MKU there. And uh, I'm telling you, MKU is gonna keep running. If it's not me, it's somebody else. But I'm gonna try. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try to be there. I'm gonna try to lead a very good team. Um, all the knowledge I have from work, I do as a li um, for a living. I, I, I manage a business, so all my knowledge in business, I'm trying to put in in, in this in this uh, project that I have. Project that I met up very very good people. Uh, I just to be honest with all of you guys, I just don't, I just can't imagine myself without the MK community. Um, and I was telling my mom that I was thinking about changing my name to Gertrude because people call me Gertrude more than people call me Noel. So, <laughs> damn. <laughs> yeah, like, like you know, like it's uh, it's something really good. Uh, it was it was kind of hard to explain this to my girlfriend because she always sees me in the computer. Hey, you know how girls are. Uh, I explained to her that this is this is a business. Uh, I'm not, I'm not making money out of this, but this is I see this as a business because I see this. Uh, I have it like that in my mind because it's very important for me and it's very important for a lot of people. If I let MKU down, I'm letting I'm letting down a lot of guys, and I don't want that. So. Uh, I'm telling you, MKU is there and uh, it's going to keep running no matter what. <laughs> well, I mean, like you said, I mean, I'm going to throw something out there just to throw it out there. To Now, you said that you're going to be with the site in one aspect or somebody else. Would you be willing to sell the site? Uh, you know that I already... I got two two people interested in the in the website. Uh, first of all, was uh, you know like two three years ago, I already mentioned it. Uh, but this person wanted to buy half of the website. Um, I I just I just I just didn't want to. Um, and uh, I'm, you know to answer the question, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say only. Four, four words, love. I just love the community. Well, and, let, me, uh, let me ask you this. Let's say somebody like, uh, I don't know, me said, hey, I will buy the site from you. I will still let you be a part of it, obviously. Um, it would pull the burden of, of the money situation off of you. Um, it would still allow you to be a part of the site, obviously an intricate part of the community. And basically with me at the helm maybe there could be some kind of merger between test your might and mku uh would that be something that you would be interested in possibly following up with um there is a lot of people who believes still in gerchap and because of all these people i wouldn't i wouldn't sell mku no, I mean, like I said, I mean, if anything, I would just be pulling you off as far as the, I wouldn't pull you off of the site in any way, but I would pull the burden of that, you know, having to shell out the money and, and you know, basically lighten your load a little bit and I would take over the site, but would still let you guys run the site. Uh, so I wouldn't be taking any power away from you whatsoever, except the name on the domain as far as ownership. Uh, you know that um, I, as uh, as the owner, I have survived several attacks, and uh, I survived the 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 hack that they did a few months ago. Yes, I remember that over at uh, during MLG. Right. If I if I survive that, I can survive whatever it comes my way, and. Um, I'm, I, you know, I'm sure you're putting yourself as an example. You know, like you are a very nice guy. You are a very known guy in the community. I know your intentions are very uh, are, are well. You know, but um, sometimes the title doesn't really mean anything. You know, like uh, yes, I own a hundred percent of of MKU, but that doesn't make me a better person in the in the in the community. That doesn't make me uh, a better person in the website. I don't. I've never been 
I've never been a single person in not even in the shop box. Um, I don't. I don't really. Go you've never banned anybody. No. See, that's cool. That's that's pretty noble. Mm -hmm. I, uh, that's that. That was the whole point of this show from the get go. You could turn around on this show, say "fuck shit," diarrhea, burger, fuck yourself. I don't care. I'm not banning you. You can say whatever you want in the chat box. You could flood me with porn if you want. But just know this. If you flood me with porn in the chat box and I find you at a tournament, you're going to get a little bit of napalm bombs dropped on you. That's, uh, that's, <laughs> that, you know, like that, that's, pretty much my, that's pretty much my style. And uh, some, people, some people who knows me very well, they know, they know how I am. They know that uh, I'm very, I'm, I'm a very, you know, like I'm cool, you know, like, I'm cool. You can, you can be talking shit on the website. You can be, uh, you know, talking a lot of crap online. Uh, if you, if you come to me, if you, t if you tell me that straight to my face, that's a different thing. You know what I mean? Because in the, in online, a lot of people can say whatever they want. But uh, I think they call them keyboard warriors. Right. But, uh, first of all, I don't let, I don't let stuff that is that happens online get to get to me because uh, there's nothing you can't do you know like i'm a first of all i'm a, i'll be 33 in about 20 days you know like next month and i don't i don't like playing games i don't like playing like uh oh you told me this i'm gonna do this to you no i don't I, i'm not like that and uh i'm not i'm not i'm not here with you know, like bullshitting because there is a lot of people, there is plenty of people here uh, listening to what I'm saying. Uh, there is you right there. Uh, and I'm sure uh, this show is going to, you know, like a lot of people who didn't see the show, it's going to be able to, to watch it later. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not, I'm not lying. Whatever I'm saying, every single thing that I've said, I can back it up with proof if it's, if you know, if needed. But uh, I'm not here to talk bad about people. I'm here because I was invited and uh, I was very, uh, you know, like I really liked the idea of coming to the show. <clears throat> I remember when I told the guys and the staff, I told them and uh, they, they just said, oh, great. You know, like, you know, guys, we, I don't know, you know, like, I don't know why people hate MKU so much because uh, two years ago, we had an attack from uh, from from some guys. Uh, we survived. Last year, uh, for evil, we got another attack. That one was that one was hard because uh, uh, tracks uh, dark tracks from uh, he called me from Canada and I'm Gertrude. This is happening. This is uh, this is big. This is big and uh, it's evil weekend. So tracks had to work for like 10 hours straight just to get it back. And we couldn't, we couldn't get it back. So we went through all evil weekend with no sight. So we fixed it. And uh, uh, I would say like six months ago, I would say six, five months ago, we got the biggest attack ever. Uh, they hacked my email account. And with that email account, they got access to MKU control panel and they did a lot of stuff in there they hacked my paypal account which i'm still fighting with paypal they don't they don't want to give they don't want to give it back to me and the saddest thing is that i had some balance in that account um so and the the worst thing was that uh i was in guatemala during this this time uh i couldn't call tracks because being there is very expensive calling another another country so uh, i had to wait for tracks to call me he called me uh, we had you know like this is the love for the community and uh, i'm not here to make up stories i'm here to tell you guys the truth because um uh, all these people that are that are viewing the the show right now all these people they bought the mk copy and they deserve the truth you know so we got hacked one day uh they did a lot of damage in the website uh dark trucks was trying to keep up with the, with the attacks uh he couldn't bobby blaze i don't know if you guys know bobby blaze do you no nah, i'm not familiar with him uh, yeah never mind all right bobby blaze uh i 
I've known Bobby Blay since '05. He was one of my first uh, friends in in Mortal Kombat Online. He's an Xbox guy. He's still online. Uh, he was the co-creator for MKU. It was me and him, the one who uh, created MKU. So he he came to he came to the rescue, you know, to work with Dark Tracks with Oshi and and uh, Bobby Blaze. So they they would try to keep up with these attacks. They couldn't. So. Uh, Trax called me, he told me like, oh, MKU is not working, the domain name, we don't have the domain name. Somebody hacked it, somebody changed all the information. So what we had to do, we had to purchase another name. Why? Because of love, because we didn't want MKU to just get lost. So we had to purchase combatunited.com. So, and that Trax had a he put a all again the website into this new domain name. Uh, it was working bad because they kept it. Well, you know, it, it was it was just it was just a mess. But um, so we had a combatunited.com, and um, so in the meantime, we were trying to get Mortal Kombat United back the domain name, and we couldn't. And someone who really really helped us, and this person told told dark trucks and myself just to keep it like that he didn't he didn't want to be known as the helper um he helped us getting model combat united domain back um we got it back after uh do you do you, after, do you do you care to uh expose who that was uh who the person who did it yeah who helped you oh you know, like just for respect, I don't want to because he told me I'm gonna help you guys, but I don't want my name to be, to be like I don't want to be known as the helper. All right. So without divulging the name, was it a test your mic guy? Uh, it was. It was a guy who goes to both sides. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but uh. I mean, you know, it is. You can tell that it's a guy that is doing things for the community, not for, not for the site. Okay. Uh, so he he told us that he could help us, and uh, we got the name. Uh, I would say like in two weeks. So, but uh, just imagine the stress of us not having the name and having the stress of just losing all these people that we've been working hard for years. You know. So, and uh, so I had to scan my passport, scan my my ID from here. I had to uh, I had to send emails, 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 and I'm like, ah, this is uh, Noel Fuentes, blah 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 blah. My social security number, everything, just for me to get the domain name back. So we got it back thanks to um, thanks to this um, person, and thanks to all the hard work we did. <laughs> We got it back. Uh, the person or the group of people who did this, they did it well because it really damaged the the website. It really damaged the community. Uh, the spike and you know, like the traffic went from 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 you know, like big to nothing. So we started. We had to start like all over again. People wondering, oh, is MKU gone? Is MKU gone? Is MKU gone? And uh, you know, like you can just let something just disappeared something that you have worked so hard you know now he, let, let me let me just <clears throat> let me just interject a section now i see everybody on the stream breaking balls thinking it's funny to say it was me it was me it was me it isn't funny you know this is why this community is a bunch of pussies um it's the simple fact that over a keyboard you can joke around and say that but if you weren't the one that put a lot of work into this to have it done to you and to have your shit undermined like that really sucks. Um, the fact that the the fact that you know you guys can joke around about it, you know, and I don't care whether you're a VSM guy or MKU guy or a test your mic guy, and you think it's funny. Um, 
all I could say is, how funny would it be if I punched you in the fucking mouth and then I laughed about it in your face? I mean, in a nutshell, that's what I'm saying. I mean, to 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 for a guy to put, you know, years of work into a website. No, I'm not going emo. You know, uh, I'm just as P as uh, Triforce likes to say, I'm giving you real talk. Um. It's to to have everything you worked on building just ripped apart um, within like two hours of, of putting in years of work on it um, is really kind of fucked up. And whether you're a test your mic guy or if you're an MKU guy, you know, you guys are the community. And whether you're separated or together, to go to your site one day and just have it gone and to have it taken down in a way that that's not really repairable with just putting a a index file back into a root directory and actually turning it into a, you got everything deleted you know all the years of work of stuff is just gone so i mean you guys control it and you could say all that bullshit till you're blue in the face but you know until you lose something like that and even though you got a you, you got those wise ass comments I still don't wish it to happen to you, you know, whether it's, you know, working your job and, you know, I don't care, whatever you're doing, separating glass on an assembly line or fucking licking stamps to envelopes, to come into your job and have yourself undermined or, or something you do undermine really sucks. Anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Gurchat. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're right. Uh, <clears throat> because this thing hurts. Uh, very, very well. Whoever did this did it, did it right, because they knew how to, how to uh, really hurt the whole NKU community. I would say, um, and in talking about what you just said that this is very serious was, uh, whoever did this got a actual picture from uh, Bobby Blaze's dad and Dark Tracks dad and they sent a PM to Dark Tracks saying um, I don't remember the, the, the words but this is the point of that PM I want MKU down or something is gonna happen to to this person and guess what it was uh, Dark Tracks father see that's that's um pussy ass that's what that, once again that's pussy ass shit now i ain't saying you know here i'm gonna dispel a rumor right now um people you know i've heard people in the room saying that you know pig had something to do with it you know what if anything pig was just a system uh, a, a situation of of his his account was in the wrong place at the wrong time because you know what and this was before i really started coming to your site he actually called me up and said to me, Jimmy, you know, you know, it basically said, we don't talk a lot, but I got to ask you your opinion. And he basically said, look, you know, I love the site, but, you know, somebody did this through my account. It wasn't me. And you know what? Honestly, the guy called me up out of the blue. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it definitely wasn't him. So, you know, the people that are in the, in the chat saying it was him, um, he had nothing to do with it. You know, if worst case scenario, they, you know, from what I heard, they might have, they used his account to get in. Um, now, does that point fingers at other people? Yeah. Does it, you know, for him to call me up and say that, though, you know, especially after not talking, you know, I mean, like we met at uh, NEC or Winter Brawl, whatever it was. And then maybe we had one or two casual chats after that. For him to go out of his way to call me to say that, you know what, all honesty, I believe he never had nothing to do with it. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, you know, like now that you're talking about uh, about pig, right? Um, again, like I said, I'm not here to point. Like you know, I'm not pointing fingers to anyone right now. Uh, pig, pig was one of the very very first people I met uh, online, um, and pig is one of the guys that I met in in you know like in New York. I would say 2007. I drove from Boston to New York just to meet Pig of the Hat and meet some other guys. Uh, actually, MKF30, I, I met him too. What? Um, whoa, 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 whoa. You actually met MKF30? Wow. Right. right. Wait, 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 wait. He's Stop never gone the to fucking presses. Stop the fucking presses. Everybody in the chat, 
Gerchap is the one person that's actually met MKF30. Off Holy line. shit! Offline. Yeah, he's such a he's a, he's a character. <laughs> you say a character? Is he like missing arms and limbs and? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he is, uh, he, I don't know, man, he, uh, he is, I don't know, I can't just describe it because, you know, like, he, he seems like a cool guy, you know, like he, he does, he has done anything bad to me, you know, I can say he's a bad person, but I don't know what's up with him because he has this thing that nobody likes him, you know, nobody likes him, I don't, you know, like, because he rejects challenges, he doesn't play. He doesn't play good people. And I'm sorry, MKF, if you're going to hear this, but uh, that is the truth. You know, he doesn't accept challenges. I've been in this community for seven years, and I've never seen him play a very good player. You know, he. I remember in MKO, he posting in the good games thread. He used to say, like, oh, good games to this, good games to that, like 20 zero me, 21 one me, 20, 25 me, you guys are good, you guys are good, you know what I mean? But I'm uh, posting scores all the time, but he never, he never accepted challenges from, from good people, from, from that, the great guys in that era, you know? But uh, yeah, it was uh, that day, that, that weekend that I went to New York, uh, I met up with Pig of the Hut, in MKF, uh, we went to actually myself, Pig, and two other guys went to have uh, lunch, and and we were waiting. We waited for like three hours for MKF thirty because he wasn't showing up. He, we were calling him. Probably he wasn't gonna show up, <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, we met him. Uh, it was good. And uh, Pig, uh, Pig is my friend. It was it was bad that uh, whoever did this used his account, and uh, I don't know, but you, James, or whoever would have done the same thing that I did. I had to I had to put a stop. I had to um, uh, disable Pig's account. Yeah, you had because, to stop the bleeding because they could still get through it. Right. So and uh, and uh, because everything happened, everything happened so quick. And uh, there was no time to explain and everything. Uh, then we all got the wrong idea. We all got the wrong idea, and it became drama. And uh, till this day, I still have to talk with Pig. Uh, the other uh, last last Tuesday, actually, on the show, we were talking here, and um, we we we're going to be talking on the phone soon because this needs to stop. Uh, I really appreciate pig of the hat as a friend uh again like i said uh, he is one of the friends that i used to play in mortal kombat deception um oh, you're, you're one of the four players that actually played that crap game <laughs> i used to play it also <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh you know like it is from those days not many people remains online not like all the big names from that era they they just disappeared just a few names around. Um, it was those were you know good days that uh, we could just go to MKO and talk rap and not 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 dealing with a lot of drama. Now that we run the show, it is it is a little harder because uh, you play you you know like you can't take sides because people sees you as as a leader in the community. I'm not saying that I'm a leader. What I'm saying is that if people sees me as the, as the person from MKU. Um, I don't like titles. I don't like going around with egos. Um, I remember when I went to Philly, uh, the the weekend I met up with Bond and Storms. I was in the in the in the bar in the in the hotel, and this guy came to me and told me like, "Oh, excuse me, are are you from MKU?" And I'm like, "Yeah, are you Gertrude? Yeah." And he said, "Oh shit, I just I just met the owner from MKU and blah 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 blah." So those things made me realize that uh, the community loves me as much as I love them too. You know what I mean? Uh, it's not funny paying the it's it's not funny and it's not fun paying uh, the bells. Paying for domain name, paying for this, paying for that. It's been it's been a long run. We started this as a hobby, nine ninety nine a month, and 
it went all the way to big bucks a month. I'm a, I'm not a wealthy person. I, I have a person, you know, I'm a person with a 40 hour job. Um, I don't have a lot of money, but I, I try to invest something in the community and hopefully one day uh, we get to get united. There is a lot of, there is a lot of stuff that is happening in uh, one of the, in, in, I want the community to be united. That's why I'm in the show. You know, like, that's why when you told me, I, I run, like, I didn't even think about it. I'm like, yeah, cool. Because, uh, because, um, yeah, I'm seeing the stream, but I just can't keep up. It's going like way too fast, uh, with Oshie. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, guys, like if you have questions for him and anything, like, just send us on Twitter now and I'll bring you read it. That's why, you know, if people want to go back to this afterwards, that's why I put the chat on the stream now. So you pretty much can go back and, and actually see the shit that people talk. So all those keyboard warriors out there, just know I'm going to go through this with a fine tooth and comb. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, like again, like I said, and I want to make a point clear, uh, I'm not accusing Pick Up The Hat for, for the things that happened to the website. Uh, we disabled his account because that was the account that I was, it was hurting MKU. Uh I'm not saying it was him. I'm just saying that we had to disable the account because of for obvious reasons. Um, I still have to talk with him. Uh, I don't like the idea of not talking with him. I don't like the idea of being like this because uh, he, first of all, he, you know, it's not because he's a good player or, or he has improved so much. It's not about like the status in the community. It's about the, it's about the relationship you have with this person. And uh, Pig of the Hat and myself, we brought a lot of people to the site, to the community, like uh, Misofly, and a lot of people who came to the community because it was because of Pig of the Hat and myself too. But um, I don't know, I still have to talk with him and probably one day we can, we can, uh, you know, like just uh, get united again and having Pig of the Hat aboard. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know, like, you know, as far as, I don't know, what what do we got coming up? We got uh, the MLGs coming up. Uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to attend any of the tournaments. I mean, I know Pig, I can imagine, because, you know, Pig's money hungry these days, because he's, you know, he's a top dog out there, so he's going to be going to those MLGs to collect some cash. I mean, if, if everybody could just get together at an MLG and sit down and everybody have a couple of beers, uh, you pretty much can get the vibe that all the bullshit that's floating around that it, it just gets swept under the rug will pretty much come up get discussed and, and and will actually come to an end you know it's no different than like i said you know over the last year everybody said you know vsm bunch of cocky guys you know they're they're arrogant they you know who do they think they are and then you know when when come time to tournament time and everybody gets together they go you know what all the guys at VSM are actually cool guys. You know, there there is no there is no assholes except maybe for Felice, but you know that's just <laughs> that's just Felice. Um, but you know, even like uh, you know when we all met Pig for the first time in in Philly, uh, you know there was that secretness. You know, we we don't want to practice with you guys because you know they 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 had that persona or, or that perception. I mean that you know VSM is just these untouchable guys when really all it is is it's a big club you know it's a click of guys that that get together that play the game together every week that uh you know at the end of the day that's exactly what it is i mean me and max i don't think we've gone to a tournament where we haven't gotten destroyed as far as booze wise since last since april of last year or may have since last year when we whatever it was uh, the first uh Seasons beatings I went to. Um, you know, Pig's a stand-up guy. You know, I will say that. He's always been a guy about the community. Um, you know, and this ain't emo talk. That's just real talk. Uh, you know, so I mean, when I heard that, you know, he was banned from the site, and I, I was kind of taken back a little bit where I was like, you know, here's a guy that, you know, he does nothing but good shit for the site, you know, as far as I saw where this happened and I don't want to say I thought you took the wrong course of action um, but 
you got to protect the site. And then, you know, maybe it could have been handled a little bit differently where you said, hey, look, I got to disable your account. Come out with an alias account for now. We'll give you an alias account. You come back on. But until we isolate this, you know, we got to kind of basically ban Pig of the Hut as Pig of the Hut is. Um, maybe things would have turned a little different. But, you know, that's something that you two actually got to sit down and discuss. Because, I mean, he's, he's a stand-up guy. You know, so, I mean, to, to think he's going to hold a grudge, I don't think so. You know, and from what you're saying right now, you, you're not, uh, you know, you're not bitter about it. You just wanted to fix the problem before it escalated any worse. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I mean, and if everybody in this community could take that attitude, um, you know, like I said, this whole MKU... I know everybody says I'm bringing up, I'm ripping this Band-Aid off, like I'll repeat it again, but this MKU versus test your might mentality, um, this shit's got to end, you know, because with a game like Injustice, you know,